Your ears should be open now to hear the things of the ability to go on. And you'll not be held back by old religious traditions, but because you use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, your ears will be open and sensitive to the new way to go on. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost the Father is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by speaking in agreement with his word. By saying his words declaring his words and speaking in agreement with his words isn't that good to know yes. Luke 12 41 then Peter said unto him Lord speakest thou this parable unto us or even unto all and the Lord said who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over all his household to give them their portion of the meat in due season verse 43 blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he comes shall find so doing say so doing. so doing he knows the will of God and he does the will of God are you here and verse 44 of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath is this true does that sound pretty good yeah, yeah. if so the guy who's doing the will of God he's gonna be made ruler over all that he hath verse 45 but if that servant say in his heart my Lord delays his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looks not for him meaning he's not aware of it and at an hour when he's not aware of it while well, he says that okay and an hour that he's not aware of it and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers does that sound good no no that doesn't sound good you don't want the portion of the unbelievers verse 47 and that servant which knew his lord's will say he knew his lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes ouch they ouch. ouch you don't want that I don't want that verse 48 but he that knew not and did and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes marginally better but this is what I wanted to get here for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required we've all heard this verse of Scripture for unto whomsoever much is given of him much shall be required well I say it almost every time that we're up here and I say the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words have you ever heard me say that yeah. mm -hmm. well it took a lot to get here you understand that right a lot of people aren't there but it took us a lot of scripture a lot of praying a lot of preaching a lot of having our minds renewed to get here we're on solid biblical ground where we stand but it took us a while to get here mm -hmm. we've been given much to get here it took a while to get here it took much to get are you here yes. mm -hmm. it took much to get here well what would that mean to whom much is given much is required and is this part of God's will yes. we know the will of God we know the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we know it's his will and how we walk with him by saying words took a long time to get here took a lot of mental renewal and frankly a lot of getting rid of old religious ideas mm -hmm. to distill something down to that root element it's a huge statement mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today well how do you walk with him we walk with him by speaking in agreement with his word Amen. that's distilled down it's very simple but believe me a lot of people aren't there a lot of people haven't come as far they haven't been given as much mm -hmm. to get here well we've been given much to get here and so therefore much is required so it took a lot to get here where to here to the belief that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today the only God in the earth today Jesus isn't in the earth he's coming again well if he's coming again it means he's not here everybody would agree that Jesus is coming again well who's here then the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost came into the earth and he's now God in the earth and we walk with him 
well everyone's not here a lot of a lot of people are on different levels of this journey to get here some of them will never get there because they're unwilling to let go of some of their religious belief and thinking mm -hmm. you understand but it doesn't mean they can't get here it's literally in their doctrine mm -hmm. that the Holy Ghost is God and that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father it's literally in black and white and red sometimes right. and I've been preaching on it but this is our new reality we live in a new reality that other people don't live in doesn't mean they can't get there but they're gonna to have to be willing to have their mind changed I was gonna say altered but that sounds kind of freaky yeah. an altered state of mind well the reality is that most people think they're walking around in some other way but the reality is and our new reality that we walk in every day is that I walk with the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today it's his dispensation and I walk with him by speaking in agreement with his words it's a new reality are you here yes. now what am I responsible for all of that exactly I'm responsible to walk with the Holy Ghost as God and worship him and speak in agreement with his words will that take me farther than let's say some people who aren't the fact is it should take you all the way there where we're going until Jesus returns Luke chapter 2 verse 41 now his parents talking about Jesus now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover and when he was 12 years old they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast how old was Jesus 12, 12. was he filled with the Holy Ghost no he was not because he didn't get filled until he was baptized by John and the Holy Ghost came into the earth but Jesus was beginning to realize he wasn't like it, all the other people he realized that he had a father that was in heaven you understand yes. verse 43 and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned the, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew it not of it but they supposed him to have been in the company he was probably running around with the other boys yeah he suppose Jesus ran around with the other kids yeah. yes he was a child he was a kid yes. normal kids run around and they went a day's journey and they sought him among the kinfolk and acquaintance and when they found him not they returned back again to Jerusalem seeking after him sounds sounds about right mm -hmm. that's what normal parents would do yes. and it came to pass that after three days they found him oh my goodness they must have been freaking out after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions so he was obviously quite brilliant on the things of the Word of God mm -hmm. isn't that amazing mm -hmm. verse 47 and all they that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers well no kidding verse 48 when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why hast thou dealt with us behold thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing verse 49 and he said unto them how is it that you sought me wist you not that I must be about my father's business yeah. so Jesus had business to take care of say he had, business. he had business well we have business to take care of we have business to be about what's the business what's our business the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today mm -hmm. and walking with him by saying that remember much given much required the requirement is to do his business whose business the Holy Ghost's business you understand so I must be about the Holy Ghost's business you could literally base an entire new religion on that word those words that I just said the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words don't freak out yet I'm gonna explain where I'm going here you could base a whole new religion on it it's certainly a whole new denomination do you understand because the whole whole religions and denominations have been based on a whole lot less than that mm -hmm. this is a giant leap forward that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words took a long time to get here but you could literally base a whole new belief system a whole new faith it really is if you think about it it's a whole new faith from wherever you came from right 
I don't like the language of this I'm just I'm just trying to present where where it is that you are and where we're going but it's not unusual it's not unscriptural it's not even unhistorical these things happen all the time when someone in a group let's say the Baptists they get revelation of the Holy Ghost right they speak in tongues what happens they have to move out into a different denomination mm -hmm. was it unscriptural no it was thoroughly scriptural they had scriptures for it that's how you get scriptural you have scriptures for it and then it, what it does is it removes you from the other folk doesn't mean you don't love them but you've begun to believe in a new and different way right Jesus himself started a new religion he fulfilled the old religion Judaism right he fulfilled the law and then what happened they're all cropped up a whole bunch of what Christians mm -hmm. everywhere Christ Christianity is a different religion than Judaism they still come from the same roots but it's a different religion and certainly a different denomination are you here yes. yes now Jesus and Christians were called cults who were they called cults by <laughs> the Jews and people who didn't agree with them That's right. they're a cult mm -hmm. were they a cult no they were just following Jesus they were trying to do what Jesus told them to do and the, and the people that called him a cult didn't want to do that you know who will call you a cult people don't who don't want to worship the Holy Ghost and walk with him by saying words why because they haven't come to that place yet so they'll just sit they'll just they'll just it's easier to just say oh you're a cult right are you having fun with this I don't know brother I'm a little bit worried but you understand when I say and we're responsible for it we've come to the belief that the Holy Ghost is the living God in the earth and we walk with him by saying words that's automatically going to take you out of other groups and they will automatically call you a cult because you believe differently does that make you a cult no, no it only makes you a cult in their eyes right. so Jesus was called a cult when he came out the people that were following Jesus were called a cult when the Holy Ghost comes and when you begin to worship the Holy Ghost literally he's God he came into the earth and when we begin to follow him how much more will the people who do that accurately be called a cult I don't like this cult language brother neither do I but I'm not the one calling it so we have the Holy Ghost literally a, a huge thing that happened on the day of Pentecost and it's taken a long time to get here to where we recognize him as God and follow him as God what does that sound like sounds like a cult brother sounds like you're not doing what everybody else does let's look at this uh, first Corinthians chapter 3 we'll just get right to it verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than is laid is that in your Bible mm -hmm. which is Jesus Christ are you here yes. what's the foundation Jesus Christ what does that mean what Jesus said what he established do you know what Jesus's purpose was yes. besides paying for your sins and sicknesses according to scripture it was to bring the Holy Ghost and introduce <coughs> the Holy Ghost and baptize you in the Holy Ghost no other foundation can be laid except that which is already laid and that is Jesus Christ mm -hmm. which of a necessity means being baptized into fully immersed into the Holy Ghost as God are you here yes. so you can't be called or can't be you can't be can't be you can't be a cult receiving the one that Jesus sent mm -hmm. unless they're gonna call you a cult because you received the one Jesus sent well then you can just look back at them and go <laughs> Is that a, that that's almost an honor you can't be a cult receiving the one say the one, the one. Jesus sent who was the one Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. Jesus went to the right hand of the Father and sent the another yes. the one the Holy Ghost who's now in the earth who's in the earth the Holy Ghost. Jesus no. the Father no. no the Holy Ghost is in the earth 
and like i said last week do you suppose the father and jesus knew that the holy ghost was god yes he's the third person of the godhead they knew so now we have one person of the godhead in the earth holy ghost in fact he's in you and you're a temple what should the temple do worship the god that you are a temple of holy ghost so you can't be a cult receiving the one that jesus sent and following him jesus told you to follow him when he has come he will lead you if he leads you what are you to do follow him you can't be a cult when you're following the one that jesus sent and worshiping the living god say i worship the living god who did you just say you worshiped the living god and who is it who is he the holy ghost specifically and concretely in the bible the holy ghost is called the living god are you here yes is it possible that you could be a cult no is it possible that others are yes. and think that they aren't emphatically yes but we won't go down that road <laughs> if you're being called a cult or different by doing so by following the holy ghost so be it mm -hmm. it's almost a badge of honor you aren't being arrogant you aren't being obstinate but you are literally following in the footsteps of jesus they called him a cult master right now we're following the living god the holy ghost the one jesus sent mm -hmm. would it be any less for you to be called a cult no, no. they called the master a cult guess what you get called <laughs> if you're doing it right boy this is fun isn't it it's not unprecedented or without precedent is it nope. look through time john chapter 13 verse 20 verily verily this is jesus mm -hmm. say this is jesus. this is jesus verily verily i say unto you he that receives whomsoever i send receives me and he that receives me receives him that sent me were we supposed to receive the one jesus sent yeah. Yeah. yes is he god yes, yes where is he now in he's in the earth and he's with you holy ghost worship him are you getting this yes. are we contrary to what jesus said to do no. no by receiving the holy ghost we receive what jesus did and sent mm -hmm. by not receiving the holy ghost we're not fully say fully fully, fully appreciating what jesus did and sent mm -hmm. john chapter 5 and then let's look at verse let's just read verse 44 how can you believe which receive not honor one of another and seek this is really what i want to get to and seek not the honor that comes from god only how can you believe which receive honor from one another and seek not the honor that comes from god only i'm going to read it one more time how can you believe which receive honor from one another meaning the people the other believers they give you honor you're seeking that honor you're seeking to believe right so that you're pleasing them I, I agree with you I believe with you and seek not the honor that comes from God only what's the honor that comes from God only receiving him as he is the Holy Ghost God in the earth today I walk with him by saying words your new reality that honors God that honors Jesus because he sent the one into the earth are you here mm -hmm. but if I seek to try to convince you know and try to go along and just stop this because they're calling me a cult then you're seeking honor that comes from men instead of the honor that comes from God the Holy Ghost only is this making sense mm -hmm. which would you rather have the honor that comes from the Holy Ghost are you here yes I know I do so we receive honor from following the Holy Ghost and we are following the Holy Ghost the standard unbeliever will probably call you a cult the typical I call them unbeliever because they're they're unbelievers in where we've come to that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him I say, are you here yes mm -hmm. quite typical but we are following the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today and we are walking with him by saying words which is honoring 
to God our righteousness our right standing is with God it might not be with our right standing might not be with the typical local church are you here but our right standing is with God the Holy Ghost our righteousness is with God you don't have to turn there but Romans 14 7 says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but the kingdom of God is in righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost our righteousness is in the Holy Ghost the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost our right standing is with God the Holy Ghost and in his king are you getting this yes. here we are we're in the earth the Holy Ghost is God it's his dispensation we worship him we know this we're here and we know that we walk with him by saying words because the righteousness of God says in agreement with God's Word are we right are we in right standing with God God who God the Holy I say that it, I would present to you that if people aren't worshiping the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today they're not in as right standing with God as they should be nor can they walk with him listen nor can they walk with him in the full capacity that he was sent in the earth to bring about but you can are you here yes. well anyway here we are say here we are, here we are. do you know where you are well, I'm right here well I'm in the earth and the Holy Ghost is in the earth and I walk with him by saying words that's where we are and I'm attempting to go on we have business to accomplish we've come to this place of revelation and understanding and now we have business to accomplish would you be angry at me if I attempted to go on no. go on from where go on from here where we are y'all said well here we are well where are we gonna go on from we're gonna go on with the Holy Ghost as God worshiping him and speaking in agreement with his word that's how we go on we know we've we've been given much to get us here now we have to go on from here well many have not come to this place many won't come to this place for whatever reason usually it's a lot of religious doctrine they just don't like the sound of it that sounds nothing like anything I've heard before and it sounds like you're a cult or it's had a knee-jerk reaction rather than looking at the scriptures and understanding what's going on many have not come to this place many won't go on many say I can't do it what's gonna happen to those people they're not gonna go on they won't go on they say they're not gonna go on well what they have what they say so anyway I'm attempting to go on from where from where we are that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today I mean that is a long way if we could get people to go there that would be great but that's not all that we have to do we've come to this place and it's taken us a while to get here which means now we have business to take care of part of which is bringing other people in mm -hmm. to this belief system in a new way a new reality is it a new reality yeah. as a believer that you wake up in the morning the Holy Ghost is God it's a new reality it's a new way it's a new belief system it turns into you and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost and you but there's a business to be about and that business is Holy Ghost worship worshiping the Holy Ghost because he's God in the earth today in fact using the words I worship you Holy Ghost what's happening when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost you're worshiping God the real God the living God in the earth today I worship you Holy Ghost you use those words I was specifically told those words to tell people and if you do that whether you like what I'm gonna say right now or not if you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I become an apostle to you we've brought this message into the earth are you here yes. and your ears should then listen your ears should be open now to hear the things of the ability to go on and you'll not be held back by old religious traditions but because you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost your ears will be opened and sensitive to the new way to go on say the new way, the new way that, I that I shall go on, shall go on. are you ready we're attempting to go on Acts chapter 10 verse 34 then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth I perceive 
that God is no respecter of persons now who's the God that we're talking about the Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today the Holy Ghost is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him another word for fear is to worship it's translated worship in many other parts of the Bible so in every nation he that fears or worships God and works righteousness is accepted with him so if we worship the Holy Ghost and work righteousness we're accepted with him is this in your Bible yes. so here we see two elements of which it is acceptable or pleasing to God one is worshiping God worshiping God who is the Holy Ghost and working righteousness so what if I worship God the Holy Ghost and work righteousness work righteousness by speaking in agreement with his word what does that make me does that make me acceptable unto God what if I don't then I'm not acceptable unto God mm -hmm. so this place that you've brought to is a place of acceptability are you here does this make sense are you happy or you're just angry <laughs> we have a lifestyle of walking with God the Holy Ghost knowing him and speaking in agreement with his words it's a lifestyle it's a faith it's a belief system it's a religion if you want to call it that way well I'm uncomfortable with that well then you're uncomfortable with pleasing God and going in this direction because that's the direction we're going with and we have business to take care of and it's not gonna stop here it's gonna grow that's right. so we have a lifestyle of walking with God the Holy Ghost knowing him and speaking would it be good if you knew the Holy Ghost yes. would it would it be good if you knew the Holy Ghost better what do you suppose you're going to learn about the Holy Ghost if you start to know him better he seems like God doesn't he mm -hmm. sort of acts like God hmm wonder if I should worship him the answer is yes and when you begin to worship him he'll be able to manifest himself in ways that he couldn't until you do start worshiping him mm -hmm. as God we have a lifestyle a faith a belief system and in fact it, it could be considered a new religion Romans chapter 1 let's look at verse 17 for herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith so we go from one faith to the next faith are you here I go from one faith to the next faith as it is written the just shall live by faith so that could be a lifestyle that you've taken upon yourself a lifestyle of faith the righteousness of God who is God the Holy Ghost and we have faith in the Holy Ghost it's our lifestyle Romans chapter 10 and then let's look at verse 6 the righteousness which is of faith speaks the righteousness of faith is a lifestyle because the just shall live by faith right and here it says the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise so I have a lifestyle of faith speaking I worship the Holy Ghost and I walk with him by speaking by saying words that's how I'm right with him go down to verse 8 but what says it the word my righteousness my lifestyle is saying the word we have a lifestyle of walking with the Holy Ghost and speaking in agreement with his word quoted again Acts chapter 10 35 we were just there he that fears God and works righteousness is accepted with him two elements fearing or worshiping God and working righteousness the working righteousness specifically I just read it is speaking in agreement with his word what's worshiping God that's worshiping God yeah. I suppose you have to ask yourself the question who are the true worshipers we're almost done who are the true worshipers you have to ask yourself that don't you ask yourself that who's the true worshiper now every so-called cult worth their salt what do they say we're the true worshipers are you here wouldn't they I go probably cult after cult people that I would consider cults right what do they say oh they're the true worshipers are you 
is this message fun yet <laughs> so but you got to ask yourself that who are the true worshipers go to Philippians ask yourself go who are the true worshipers say it who, who? are the true who? worshipers Philippians chapter 3 verse 3 we are the circumcision which worship God does it say worship God yes. now in the is not actually in the Greek I looked it up it says we are the circumcision that worship God the Spirit mm -hmm. we worship God the Spirit mm -hmm. who do we worship God the Spirit now I looked this up in several different translations the New American Standard says we are the true circumcision the Good News Bible also uses those words we are the true circumcision now think of that isn't that what most cults would say mm -hmm. we're the true worshipers but here it says here's Paul doing the same thing and no one they probably call him a cult we are the true circumcision which worship God the Spirit the New Living Translation says we are truly circumcised the contemporary English version you version uses the same words we we are truly circumcised which implies that they are not yeah. do you understand mm -hmm. thems are fighting words those are how denominations get separated mm -hmm. John 4 24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him God the Spirit God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is a spirit it's one of his names is the spirit of truth if I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost who am I worshiping the spirit of truth him the Holy Ghost you worship him you worship him in spirit and in truth he is a spirit and we worship him in truth which means according to the Word of God are you getting this mm -hmm. I worship God the Spirit I am a true worshiper if you don't worship God the Holy Ghost you are not a true worshiper it comes right along with that statement whether anybody likes it or not he is the Living God I worship the Living God I'm a true worshiper of the Living God because he is the Holy Ghost was that too difficult is that hard who is the Living God he's the Holy Ghost he is a spirit they that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth therefore we are the true circumcision that worship God the Spirit mm -hmm. you may ask why did it take so long to get here why did it take so long why did it take so long for us to get here was it did it seem like a long journey did it seem well we had to go through all these a lot of it is because our mind needed to be renewed you ever heard any verses of scripture like that yes. we're gonna go from good to acceptable to perfect by having our mind renewed Romans chapter 12 1 and 2 well one of the reasons it took so long to get here is I believe this is an end time message and it took a long time to convince us that this is truly the way me included took time to convince us that this is truly the way but we've been uh, going little by little line upon line proving this fact of becoming a true worshipers and being established say being established, being established. what do you suppose you're being established in the new way mm -hmm. the new reality why did it take so long because it seems a little radical doesn't it that's the way it is when you're going on with God it seems a little bit beyond where you are well we have to come here and then go on and it seems contrary to so much of the things that we've been taught before that we had to have it rooted out and sometimes that tell you, you ever try to outroot something out of the, the an old tree or something and it's not easy it's a new way it's a new reality that the Holy Ghost is God and we walk with him by saying words so this is the way the Holy Ghost won't come unless Jesus departs do you remember Jesus saying that mm -hmm. yes. no, he said he won't come didn't say well he might he might not no he won't meaning Jesus had to depart before the Holy Ghost came into the earth on the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. well that still holds true 
people won't receive the Holy Ghost to the capacity and degree that he should be received as God until people let go of Jesus and let him be where he is the Holy Ghost still can't be fully God manifest in the earth without Jesus there do you understand and the reason it's take so taken so long is because we weren't fully willing to let him go but when we fully let Jesus be there then we can fully receive the Holy Ghost the one that Jesus sent and there's a new manifestation of the Spirit coming I hope you hear that there's a new manifestation of the Spirit coming that is an end end time manifestation of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today and if you'll continue to worship him he will make that way known to you he will reveal himself to you and it will be easy to walk in so but don't be discouraged don't be dismayed for i have made a way for you